Today on This Week in Music, we visit with the veteran producer who got his start getting tea for George Martin at Apple Records, then went on to manage Cool and the Gang, Lionel Richie, Rob Zombie, Morrissey, just to name a few. Andy Gould's with us. Stay tuned. I feel good, uh, even though I shouldn't. I'm chilling so hard, couldn't tell you where the hood is. Uh, I'm looking like a million bucks, sucker. I'm... Welcome back to This Week in Music. This week, my guest is Andy Gould. Andy, Hello. welcome. Thank you very much for, for joining me. Appreciate my pleasure. It. My pleasure. So, Andy is a manager. Manager uh, for, for how many how many years have you been a manager now? Oh, my God. I've been a manager now for... Oh, Lord. I think I've been in the music business since um, 19... 69, um, which means I'm really, really old, I guess. Um, even if I got in when I was two, I'd still be old, right? Isn't that <laughs> terrible? Um, I, I got in the music business, and then I realized that I really wanted to be in, like, some... I didn't want to work for the corporations. Um, I wanted to work for myself. Um, I, somewhere around uh, 1980, 88, 89, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, 88. Gotcha. So it's well, been a long time. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you in a moment. I want to know I, I want to know what that first that first gig was. I want to know some of the folks that you've managed over the years. Um, but but first, I, I have a I have a, a tradition of giving presents on my on my show. Okay. And I, uh, I I've been giving vinyl, but I didn't have time to run out today since we we just really talked about this earlier in the day to run out and get vinyl. But w once I was in your office, and uh, you're uh -oh. you're. Your assistant came in. It was probably maybe three, three thirty. No, it was later than that. <laughs> All right. You said, "Is it wine thirty yet?" Is it wine thirty? And uh, it must yeah. have been. It's a big um, tradition so in the uh, spectacle and uh, management uh, uh, general thing. Except generally, it doesn't really happen except on a Friday, and it was a Friday when you were okay. in. I remember. All right. And uh, it was. Um, it's wine 30, and I think if you can get through a week and get through that day, then I think you're allowed to have just at least a sip. All right. Well, this is uh, so I've, well, that's very uh, I've, kind I stopped of you. by Thank Wine you. Expo this afternoon and got a nice bottle of Prosecco. Um, it's good because actually my, my vinyl, my record deck, has some mysteriously stopped working. Oh, uh, well, then this is actually, this is, yeah. this is more. And it's a real shame because I've really started to get listening to vinyl. I hadn't had a record deck. My good friend Rick Sales, who manages Slayer, who you should also uh, convince to be on the show, um, uh, bought me a record deck as a, as a gift because we were doing something. And uh, um, it's been so much fun listening to music again. You know, because you know, listening, uh, listening, listening on a device right. is great, but they don't sound that good. No. And so we, I think a long time ago, and it kind of ties in with what we're going to talk about, I think, we, we, we sacrificed... Uh, quality for convenience. It's happened all the time. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard that there were, you know, people bitching about the move from 78 to LP and yeah. then obviously to cassette and then obviously when the CD came along, people said, well, that's not sound, that's a bunch of pictures of sound yeah. and now we've gotten even worse and we're all listening to... to if you go, I mean, really, if you listen to almost any record, but especially records that were made sort of with records in mind, it, 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 I don't want to say, I mean, because it it's immediately makes you sound like the oldest can you swear on this show? Yes, you can. You may be the oldest fuck on the planet, you know? But, my God, when you listen to, you know, anything, it just sounds... It's like it jumps off the speaker, whether, I don't it's think a, it, whether it's a Monkeys album or a Steely Dan album. Right. Or, or a Miles Davis record or, or a Morrissey record. Yeah, I actually, I actually don't think it makes, makes you sound old, and I'll tell you why. Cheers. Cheers, thank um, you. Because I think that um, the... One of the things the internet is giving us is uh, more consumer choice. Mm -hmm. So the mass market product had to get more convenient, but I think that what we're doing was we're going to discover a market for higher fidelity. That's that's my theory. No, I yeah, I don't disagree with that. And and there's some, you know, uh, my my uh, wonderful assistant Sarah turned me on to this new thing called Turntable FM. Yes. You know, it's not that new anymore, I suppose. That's pretty new. Pretty new. That's pretty new. And that's been fun. 
you know, just going in and finding music and having people and then having people talk about it and how, you yes. know, what's the, you know. I know, I, I'm, and now I'm going to find you on Turntable FM. Oh, I can't great. believe I'm not a, not a fan yeah, of Andy yeah, Gould on yeah, Turntable yeah. FM already. We really, uh, it's been really so much fun. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so your productivity in and your today, office has decreased the same way yes, ours has. Yeah. <laughs> today's uh, subject was songs about animals. <laughs> so, what'd you start with? Oh, Fly Like an Eagle. Oh, you know, yeah, okay, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. You know, there's so, the Scorpion song by Megadeth. I mean, right. there's, uh, you know, but then there's, there's really great, like, Weird, like you know, how much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> right, you know, right, like, right. It's like really. <laughs> so you know, there's nothing happening. You know, between wine thirty and songs about animals. <laughs> I said, please, if you're a client of mine, we really do actually work. Well, one promise. of my favorite quotes of yours, which we could save for later, is, has to do with how how hard you're supposed to work relative to your oh, clients. Oh, the second but... time that's come up today. Oh. I, I know, I know the quote. And oh, I well, let's it, come back to it then. So let's start. Let's time. start back at the beginning. If I recall correctly, you had an interesting first job in the music business. Yes, actually, I had my first job in the music business was as a. Uh, um, I used to deliver sheet music for a, 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 a publishing company, um, called, which is Chapel Music, which is obviously Warner Chapel now. It's taken over a long time ago. And one day I, I was sort of, I, used, I, I hate because I was, you know, you don't want to be a bike messenger in England. It just, you know, being a bike messenger in California, there's a chance you'll get run over, but at least you will not get rained on every day of your life. Right. And then if you, if you, if you're a bike messenger in uh, England, that's what will happen. And I hated it, but I was sort of like, oh, I found a step. This is a step in, because I just wanted to be in the music business. And um, I was deliver delivering some sheet music to a very famous record producer. And I asked him uh, and his company, could I work for them? Sort of making, we have a big tradition in England of making cups of tea for people and, you know, being the, you know, what, what I guess we'd call an intern or a gopher in yeah. America. And uh, they said, oh, we do need someone. And that was George Martin, who was the Beatles producer. So, you know, am I, uh, you know, where I come from a very, a place where there was, uh, there wasn't a lot of racism where I was from, but there was a lot of classism. Right. You know, you were either born, you know, you're hanging out with, you know, Prince Harry and Kate, or whoever it was of the day. Yeah. Or you were, like, downstairs, you know, uh, tending to their needs. And I guess I come from a little more downstairs. And uh, so, it, you know, they, my, my teachers had always said, you'll never get in the entertainment business. It just wasn't, wasn't going to happen. So... So All you of a started sudden, by yeah, making tea for the, the Beatles. Yeah, for, for George Martin, the Beatles, you know, it was already 1969, 1970, okay. so yeah. they basically, you know. So you're making tea for Badfinger. Yeah, yeah, I was making tea for Badfinger. <laughs> That's more true. And uh, it was really. A, and then you I, ended I, up, when you, when you did go on your own, you ended up managing, like, give us, give us I know you, you've, the, the roster is long, but give us some of the highlights. Um, well, the, the first one. When I was at, I, I got headhunted to come to CBS Records in 1979 because um, I, I had a couple of like minor sort of hit type things in England and they got to know me and I worked for the publishing company in, in New York. And that was the really heady times, you know, to come from like to go work for the, at that moment in time, CBS was, they really dominate, you know, you, all your great, you know, Springsteen and Bob Dylan and right. you know everybody was on that label and so to run to be part of the publishing company was great but then I realized boy if you really want to make it you really got to work you know you got to do it yourself and a couple of my buddies had started a company called Worldwide Entertainment and they were managing Cool and the Gang and they were like well, you come and manage Cool and the Gang with and this us. is so 79 so yeah this is, well, this no, is... it was, by this time it was, it was about 82 83 gotcha. So this is like celebration era. Yeah, I mean, it was gang. that was not, crazy, not and then you really boogie. realize, you know, how how where the I already, I mean, I saw that, and I've said this in interviews before, so it's it's easy to say now, but it, I actually said it then. You really realize the power of the business was the manager. You know, only now has it really been. I think, and it's not even fully realized, but it it was sort of it's being fully realized as we speak that the manager is more important than the record label. Right. Because and, and, well, yeah, and and you know, we uh, the way that the way that we often talk about that is is that you know, that's who initially has the three sixty degree deal with the artist. Yeah, is the manager. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is true, and if you, and it's still the same, you know, it's still. It, I still believe that 
whenever you see a, a really successful story, you can trace it back mo more times to the manager than to the record. I'm not to say record labels don't p play an important part, don't have a job. Right. More with, I believe more with pop than with any kind of rock music. Sure. But why do you think why do you think the manager is so important in that? Is it is it strategy? Is it what what part what part does the manager play that is that turns out in hindsight to be the part that mattered? Well, I believe you first of all the 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 record industry the record industry set itself up to fail because because of the big buildings and the high salaries and the fact that people have these crazy contracts, they get paid, you know, they get paid, you know, there are people out there getting paid 750000 a year or a million dollars a year, maybe even more, but they have a contract, so they get paid that whether yeah. they have any hits or not. Yeah. You know, I, manager sort of has, you know, if you're tw right. you know, 20% or 10% or what, 15% of nothing. I have to say, as, a, as an entrepreneur, and somebody who, you know, I have a degree in computer science. I've worked at I've worked at AOL. I've worked at Yahoo. I've I've been worked on my own. I I've never like the contracts in the music industry are so they don't they don't make any sense to me. I I, I really don't it's understand shocking. why only they exist. Now, only now, only the, now there's like you know, Lucy and Universal who I have a lot of respect for, and a few others are sort of getting like, oh yeah, why are we? Hang on a minute. Yeah, why is this Why are this we happening? doing this? Why are we paying these kind of crazy ass salaries? And it's a disincentive, as you're saying. Yeah, at the end of I, the day, I it's believe, like, well, yeah. I, I've got the, uh, you know, I've got a lot of leverage in this deal. So I mean, I I'm not still, in a big rush. I still say now, and people can do this as a, as a, uh, an experiment, <laughs> but it's really true. Even now, with everyone, you know, there's been all these cutbacks and all these people laid off. Tr I defy you during summer, particularly. Try to find someone at a record label after three o'clock on a Friday. Right after wine thirty. Well, that's the management. That's that's why it's wine thirty. No, but exactly. I mean we're still there. You're we're still working. there at least. Drinking. You know, I yeah. mean it's like I'm telling you, you can go the yeah. best time. Summer the, hours, it's called. Yeah, it's got the an best official time, name. The best time to rip off uh, uh, a record label if you want to do it. And by the way, it's crazy. You know, they've always record labels always bitch about their records leaking onto the internet. I guarantee you, because we're not that far away from right. Interscope. Right, we throw a rock. I bet you we could walk over there right now and walk in and take something off someone's desk. Right. Not, I'm not advocating that, Yeah. but I've done it. I've walked around and I'd Look, be like... Let's, let's finish this up and do it. Yeah. The night is young. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, I, I got to explain this so that I don't come across <laughs> like a crook. Um, yeah, that's true. Is, is that you can... I remember walking into an executive's office and, and seeing the new No Doubt record on their desk. And, and you know, it was not out for quite some time and I t just took it <laughs> off the desk and put it on my lap. Right. And then got into a conversation with how people... You know, how, still. How, how is this happening? How, how is this music happening? I was like, and I said it would probably take someone like me taking it <laughs> off your desk, and they like, because yeah. you know. But I, I, but I sort of understand. We didn't grow up in the, you know, most of us in the business didn't grow up with the culture of people stealing shit. Right. You know, but we do have to be more careful. I'm very, you know, now with you know the acts. And even my friends actually put stuff in the safe, put it in a drawer, lock it. I mean, if someone yeah. wants to steal it, they'll get to it one way or another. Sure, but no, I. But agree don't with make you. it easy. Look, at our company, I tell everybody on my team, you don't want the music for yeah. as long as possible. You uh -huh. know, if they'll give it to you the day before it comes out, because it's gonna leak, and I don't ever want it pointing back never, to us. I never I saw it, it better executed than Rob McDermott, who managed Lincoln Park. Yep. You know, we did it together for a long time. He and and he great guy and he on Linkin Park's second album he was he wouldn't let you know it was I think there were I think there were like two copies of the record you know he right. you know he didn't even have one right. you know like Tom Wally had one and I think their band had one they passed around to each other yeah, and, I mean, and it and didn't leak it didn't leak until a week before the record came out right or two it always weeks ends up before, leaking you know? when once it hits the mastering once it gets plan to the, or the yeah, yeah once yeah. it gets to the plan right anyway, exactly I think we're on a tangent here well what I, I guess so tell so who are you managing today let's go there mm. I'm actually um, we've got I got uh, Rob Zombie who is a you know is so many so many hats that it's like I manage three different people because we have you know, Rob Zombie, the music act, we just came back from Europe, had a very successful 
run of festivals over there. And what um, what what's what are the, what type what are the what festivals did he play? Just we I'm did Download, Sweden Rocks, Rock and Park, Rock and Ring. We did a month of festivals. We hadn't been to Europe in a long, long time. Uh, uh, in a, and that's not a good thing. We literally ignored uh, Europe for. Um, uh, I don't I don't want to say ignored. We just didn't get to Europe for right. maybe a decade. Wow. We're like a l way too long a time. And we really realized that we have to think more globally because, you know, for a long time, the American music business was so dominant. And now it's like gone the other way. You know, now you can, uh, you can spend more time touring outside of America than you can right. almost inside and, of America. Which more is lucratively really, in a lot of cases. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it just costs a lot to go over. Yeah. Especially when you have a big show like Rob. And then, you know, with the other... The other thing I do with Rob is we make the movies. Yeah. And I've, I've how many been, movies now has he made? Um, five. This and we're starting number six, any minute. Um, we're got, we got two more weeks of touring here in this uh, in America, with um, Slayer. We're co-headlining with Slayer, and those dates are selling great, mostly in Canada on the right. East Coast. And then we come back and we start a movie called Lords of Salem. Um, and Rob's, you know, we've always, you know, kind of, you know, obviously Rob writes and directs them and then we produce them together and we're doing, co-producing this next movie with a guy called Jason Blum who um, did Paranormal Activity right. and uh, uh, Insidious. Um, and uh, so we're really excited about having a new partner. So we do, you know, between Rob's music career, Rob's film career, Rob's branded career. Right. When you say branded, what do you mean? Well, T-shirts, comic books, right. doing t other types of TV. We just did a uh, uh, did our first commercial. Rob Zombie directed a commercial for Woolite, the Woolite. fabric softener, which is what's the, what's, the, what's the pitch? Don't don't let don't let your fabric softener torture your clothes. So he, he directed <laughs> it. Is he in it? No. He just wrote and directed, and it's on, it's on, it's in the cinemas. It's a, it's a commercial for, so it's sort of right. done like a horror movie. Right. But it's really cool, and we've got I, oh, yeah, I so much publicity from right. it. And, you know, there's been a few naysayers, but mostly people have been... And do you really see that? Cool, I mean, you're, with, you know? with you branching Rob out over the years from being, you know, White Zombie, Rob Zombie, Rob Zombie branded movies, do you mm -hmm. see that as a... As, as a as combating a falling music business, or are you just sort of following the Rob Zombie path? Well, I've been, you know, I've been with Rob for 19 years. It was a long, long time, and I remember when we first sort of met, and I asked Rob, you know, what do you, what do you want to do? And he literally laid out this game plan of like, I want to, you know, make the band successful. I want to have a solo career. I want to direct my own videos. Which is sort of weird because now it's so normal. But like you know, when we went into Geffen in 1992 and said we want Rob Zombie to direct his own videos, they were like, "Right, no fucking way." Yeah, you know, it was a real fight, but we won, and you know, the uh, uh, videos got you know MTV awards and got a lot of notice, and then we directed some videos for some other people, and that's how we got our first movie because people had seen the videos right. we did. And we really want to, you know, it's a, it's a, it's really, it's, you know, there's maybe three other people that have, that have been rock stars that are, that are rock stars that um, write and direct their own movies. Who are I mean, they? It's, it's, you know, I ain't mentioning them. Okay, yeah. They don't need any publicity <laughs> you, you from you. You figure it out. I don't okay. need them. I don't manage them. I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. All right. But, uh, I mean, it, it's, uh, it, 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 it took a lot to get it done and it's been, been great. Um... I'm also looking after, I, I had this uh, revelation, uh, Rob, in a moment of uh, good casting genius um, on a couple of movies ago, cast Mickey Dolenz um, in one of his movies. And Mickey and I got friends, and Mickey called me one day and said, if anyone could put the monkeys back together. Right. And so I, I put the, we put the monkeys back together this summer, and it's been very successful. So that's been keeping me pretty busy, right. uh, too. Um, and right up until recently, I was managing Devo. Right. And so, but uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that right now. It might be. And uh, so we've, it's been, you know. And, and you've, you know, you've, you've managed a lot of other people who I think are a lot like Rob Zombie, like Morrissey, Lionel Richie, uh -huh. right, uh, yeah, very yeah. similar. Guns N' Roses would probably go. I mean, I, we like did, all these, all these artists, I think they share a lot in. No, they don't. No, all right. they really don't. <laughs> Guns. I mean, you know, I 
you know, Lionel and I are still great friends, and it was great. We had a great time. I, we did Lionel when uh, when I was over at the firm, right? Uh, with the firm, and then and with you know, Guns was a Guns was, Guns was a difficult uh, band to manage. I mean, that was no. yeah, <laughs> shocking. Uh, I mean, but I love them. You know, I yeah. mean, I do. I can't really. You know, there's a lot of people out there think that there's a lot of you know, there's hatred. I, there's not. I mean, you know, I think Axel is a um, I, I think he's one of the great, you know, rock and roll singers of all time. You know, yeah. I mean, it's not think. No, it's true. Axel is one of the great singers of all time, and it, it, it's a, he's in. You know, I think with a lot of people, and you know, if you read, you know, Stephen Tyler's book, and if you look at some of these guys, you know, some of these guys there, are, they are, you know, there's a great scene in. There's a great scene in uh, uh, that Men in Black movie when he first realizes there's aliens on Earth and he goes into the command center and there's like pictures of all these like people like Oprah. And you know, right, go, oh, right. yeah, that's of course they're aliens. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, they go, of course they wouldn't be. For, you know, no, yeah. I get it now. Right. You know, and I think some of those guys, you know, that we talk about are in, in a way. in general are, are sort Yeah, of they're in, in a category. way they're sort of alien because they can't, great, I can't do a, it, you yeah, know. Yeah. And I, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, in a really. Well, I mean, that is kind of the role of management, right? Is to look after that, look yeah. after that sort of that sort of bloke. Absolutely, you got you know. Yeah, I. You why? Know. Why? Yeah. So so why? You know, I, I think you know. You mentioned earlier this this power shift, which I think you know. It's it's you know. I've I've actually heard um, folks at labels say there's a power shift from labels to artists. So I don't think that's controversial. And then sort of by proxy, manager, right? I mean, so. So where does you know where does that where does that leave the business? And let me ask it this way: I mean, I've heard you speak against labels in the past and say, look, you know, uh, as we were talking about earlier, big and fat and too long of a run, and the CD right. business is dead. But you know, the, if that role of labels to invest in artists, right? That well, for every you know, that is a problem. I mean, so you know, where do we go now? Where, I mean, if, if it's not about labels, who takes the risk? Well, I I believe that there's a there's a place. For everything, you know, I think if you're a rock band, it's different than if you're uh, Britney Spears, you know, Justin Bieber, Lady Justin Gaga. Bieber, whoever. I think that there's a, you know, there's a big, you know, with that, you really need the label push if you're going to go top 40. Right. You know, you really do, and there's no way around it. Why is that? Why do you need that? Because like, what do they have that no one else has well, that makes you, you know, need that? Just, is it about radio? Yeah, it's really about radio. It really is about, and radio, I think, is one of the great culprits of the demise of the business here in America. Uh, they are, um, I don't have, I don't always have a lot of time for some of the, you know, label radio people that, you know, go out and try to get a record played and when it doesn't get played, give up, you know, right. that's never been, can't do that if you're a manager. Right. Um, and, you know, the amount of times label people have said, oh, I don't hear that as a single, and then the you know you know cut to like you know twelve weeks later it's, there it is you know right. hiding at number one. Um, it, 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 it's uh, I have a problem, but radio has no patience. You know they do they put songs in to call out, and for people that are watching it, you know they'll call out you know and say is this familiar to you? And to most people things are not familiar. Yeah. Right away, somebody's just got to believe in something, you know. And and I really believe that the radio has really caused a lot. You know, especially with the what I call sort of segregation of radio. You know, when you hear, if you listen in, in, in L.A., and, you know, every, everywhere this is, someone's, there's an oldies radio station. And if you listen in, in L.A., K-Earth is, mm -hmm. is a very big one here on the West Coast. 101.1. Yeah. And when you listen, which is, K-Earth is a reflection of what they used to call classic FM. And when you listen to it, you hear, you know... The Monkeys, The Beatles, you know, Diana Ross, you know, Otis Redding, Jimi Hendrix, you know, Joni Mitchell. You hear all these things that were all being played on. Now, that wouldn't happen now. Joni Mitchell would be played on the folk station. Right. You know, Diana Ross would be played on the, on the black station. You right. know, I mean, it's sort of, they come compartmentalized it so badly. And especially top 40 now, it's just everything is, you know, I, I mean, I'm, Totally thrilled and glad for Dr. Luke and whoever manages Dr. Luke. But when I see in the paper that he's had his 23rd straight number one record, that 
it's I mean, God bless you. I love when people make money, and I got no issue with those people. But it's not good for the business. Right. It's like twenty three records that all sound basically the same. Right. You know, well, and I no, don't want to get that's and another. Guess what? On the call out, those sound familiar. Those sound familiar. <laughs> right. But here's the key: the number one record of the year this year, unless I'm incredibly mistaken, and if I am, it ain't happened yet. Right. The number one record, which will sell probably five to one, four to one, globally over Lady Gaga and over Justin Bieber and over Katy Perry, and maybe combined, will be Adele. Yes. Which is a real music. Sang with heart, sung with feelings, not much auto tune. Right. <laughs> you know, it is, people recognize it like they recognized five years ago Amy Winehouse with a record that was basically a, a, a Motown tribute record, you yeah. know, I mean, yep. in, the, in the nicest possible way. Or, you know, one of the biggest bands of the year so far, or the last two years, has been Mumford and Sons. Real yes. music. People do get it. Yeah. But ra it's so hard to get radio to get behind it, you yeah. know? And, it, and it's, no, it's sort of not, um, it's not a coincidence that a lot of good new music comes out of England. Why? why? Because well, the radio, you, if you go to England, got, you know, I was yeah. just over in England, you turn the radio on, you hear everything. Right. That's why these things break there, whether it's Mumford or Adele yeah, or whatever. There's, there's, that's why a, they break there first. There's a guy first in and England people... right now, oh, I, just saw it. I just saw it, it was like number six on the charts in England, a singer-songwriter guy. It's this beautiful singer, you know, like a, you know, it's going to be this year's, you know, uh, oh, God, I'm kind of my, when you get old, you see your brain goes. But it's, it's like a classic singer-songwriter, could, could, you know, this year's James Taylor. Right. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful song. It's about a, 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 someone who had a, a, an addiction, and it's beautiful. Um, uh, and And... That's right up there. And yeah, and Rihanna's up there too, and Lady Gaga's up there too, and Adele, of course, is dominating. But over here, you know, that would never, it's never going to get on the radio. Right. So, the you radio. Got, so if you have a new artist, let's say that they, let's say they don't fit the, the, radio, mm -hmm. the radio path. Yep. Where, where do you go with them? Well, you've got to, you know, I mean, I. How do, you, how do you, you know, raise the funds to invest in them and then spend the time? Because I assume it's going to take a long time. Right. Remember that. The investing the funds bit is a new invention. The bands that we all talk about, the bands that we all reference and like love to have our, you know, when we, when we talk about the greatness, you know, Led Zeppelin or The Who or, you know, even, even later on, you know, U2. And, they did it. They, they toured. They built the following up. The record labels in this sort of weird way, you know, they would bid on bands you know, that were st still hadn't got out of SIR, you know, out of the rehearsal room. Right. You know, they'd go and go, oh, we, we got to have, you know, they pay a million dollars for a band never done a gig. And then wonder why no one gave a shit. Right. I mean, you know, the great bands toured and toured and toured, you know, like U2, uh, I saw U2 in when they were playing, you know, I had a station wagon pulling a, 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 a U-Haul. Right. I mean, and that's why, you know, you, you, there's nothing that will generate fans like playing live. And, that, you know, that's really like a, you know, and you got to, yes, do you, do you have to put the band on the road? And you have, but, you know, with the, actually, in some respects, it may even be easier with the, you know, with the, with the internet and social networking and all the, all the stuff you can do. You can actually get your, your message known. And there are bands that are breaking through, whether it be Mumford & Sons or Kings of Leon or... Right, or you know, know, even like a band like Black Keys, which I feel like is that band that Black did Keys. that. Black Keys, yeah, you they know, did. They were two guys sure. on the road from Akron, Ohio, playing blues music. For 10 years before and, they're playing yeah, in front of 3,000 people at Bonnaroo. And Jack, you know, Jack White, with, yep. you know, I mean, this is, you, there are no, there, there's no sort of, I don't believe there's a simple answer. So you know what I, I mean? I think, and also I think, you know, there's an old saying, if you make it quick, you might go away quick. Yeah. Hence why there's a million shows on VH1 called, you know, One Hit Wonders of the 80s, 90s, yeah. 2000s. And you want to be able to go, you've got to work. You've got to go and get those fans one by one. And if you're out there playing, this ties into my saying. It's, which is my, one of my favorite sayings in the music you business. Never, you know, which is? Never work harder than the act is going to work. Why is that? I mean, that, well, that... because if you, want it, if you want it more for them than they want it for themselves, if you're setting up meet and greets for them to meet their fans and sign and get to know their fans and you know, interact with them and they want to stay on the tour bus or the, in the van or in the backstage with a bunch of girls smoking dope. Which, by the way, I got no problem with any of that stuff, that time and a place. Um, if, you know, they've got to invest, you know. 
It's like, you know, I say when I meet a new act, you know, what's your, what's your you know, have, what, what happens if I go onto your, you know, what would happen if I went to your MySpace or your, you know, no, I don't really, no, well, then I'm, you know, yeah, you obviously not, are not, not taking. Investing that time. Yeah, yeah. you go, So let's, you, say, let's, let's say, I'm a, let's say I'm an artist and I've, you know, you've come to see me at Hotel Cafe or The Smell or something and you, you go, this guy's, this guy's, this guy's got it, you want to work with me. What, what are you going to say to me? You're going to say, all right, well, get ready for a couple of long years? Yeah, of course, yeah. And by the way, it should... I think that's right. I mean, I, I, there should be no doubt that that's what the answer is. Because anyone who says anything else, and again, this doesn't necessarily apply to all music, but, you know, for certainly for rock and roll, you know, country, you know, and there's a, you know, you want to put the time in to make it work, or it just will, go, you know, the minute, you know, if you... If you're given your career by the record label, when the record label decide to move on, you know, you're kind of fucked. Right. You know, and I've, you know, we've all seen it. I mean, we've seen it a million times, you know. So what, so the what American you, Idols are a good example of that, you know. We've so been, you, uh, you've, you've lived through this, this curve of, and tell me if I'm wrong. Here's, here's my sense. I'm going to ask you a question, of, uh, that, that something that I've been trying to get to the bottom of. When I look at the... At, at the curve of record sales, it looks like a pretty steady incline from, you know, the 50s to the 60s through the 70s, and then there's this big uh -huh. bubble in the 80s in the, in the, in the, in the, the CD, CD world, <laughs> the CD world, right? The CD world, right? So is it, are we, where, where, where do you think, just, just given your instinct, where do you think the industry goes from here? Is it, is it, is it doom and gloom, or is it a return to the industry of... 79. Well, with a bit of luck, it's a return to that industry. I mean, we may, you know, we do, I think we do crazy stuff. I think the best thing that can happen, you know, that's been reported as of this date, we're in, where are we, July of 2011, uh, that, you know, like Live Nation will go not be a public company, it may go private. There's been, right. that, you know, I, I think it would be better if all music companies, I mean, this is a little naive, I get it. But we're not good, you know, the industry is not, it's not a, it's not a, it's a, it's a hard company to be on Wall Street because they expect, you know, their profits to go up all yeah. the time. And I, you know, even, you know, I've had really, really good music executives ask me to deliver records quicker to make their quarterly, quarterly things, things yeah. than good. And you can't, there's no way, you've got to, you know, and that's a tough, yeah, you you're in a tough place. You don't place. always have an Adele. You don't, yeah, and and you, you first of all, we've got to cut costs. That's way too bloated. Yeah. You know, you got to have it. You know, back in those days, maybe a bit before the seventies, but certainly early seventies, mid seventies. If you, to use a baseball analogy, if you hit a single or a double, you could still make a little money. If you hit a triple, you were making. If you hit a home run, but now the record labels are set up that. Only a grand slam home run right. will make the money. Yeah. And you know, even in baseball, there's not that many grand slam home runs. There just isn't. Yeah. You know, and in a, in a season of you know how many people come to bat, and, and you you know that's the problem. You got to get. We've got to get it back. Where if a if a guy has, you know, I've had a in a band ask me, we we had a gold record and the record label didn't even call us to congratulate us. Yeah. And I'm like, because they're not making any money yet. Yeah. <laughs> they got like they're still probably owed a million bucks. Yeah, and you know if we, we've got to get that under control. And the thing that drives me the most crazy is when I see Live Nation giving away you know you know five for one tickets you know because the ticket isn't selling. Or I hated what happened with Lady Gaga with Amazon. I think only you know I know Amazon paid in a scope and they all made a lot of money. But you know if you send a message to the kids that a record is only worth a dollar, which is what they did. The only people that win is Amazon. You know, yeah, she gets paid, but I just don't, you know, if a, ki you know, a kid is just starting to buy music and they like Lady Gaga, and they should, because it's, you know, for that generation, and they go, oh, I could buy this for a dollar? It means music's only worth a dollar? When someone else comes out and tries to sell it for, you know, 10, 12, whatever, you know, or a dollar for one track, or a dollar twenty-nine, whatever the going rate is. Like, do you think, you, the, you think the product in the future is that digital music, though? I mean, I wonder if that's the message: is that the, is that the digital music is lower in value at the same time? On top of it, we were sending a, selling a hundred and sixty-nine dollar 
nine-piece picture disc, right? Yeah. So, you know, the, the, maybe the value of digital music is less. I don't know. I I'm, don't know the answer to it, but I know giving, you know, I've always sort of, you know, there used to be this sort of crazy thing that uh, uh, um, they used to say, you know, it's really terrible, but back in the old days they would say, you know, to to women, you know, if you keep giving away milk, they won't buy the cow, you right, know? Yeah. And, and as wrong as that statement is, I get it, you know, there's a sort of, there's a, there's a logic behind it. Don't keep giving it away or people will stop buying it. And yeah. we love to give it away. Yeah. We give it away all the time. We give away free tickets. We give away free albums. We give away, I mean, it's like. Yeah, the promotion is, is built around free. And, the, and you know, I mean, we're the, I think we're, we are now the only country in the world that doesn't pay when a record is played on the radio. A lot of people don't even know that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like. <laughs> it looks like we might be closer to changing looks that. Looks like we might be closer. But come on, people, vote. Yeah, no, it's it's true. I mean, I think it's incredible. I mean, not only that, but you know, I when I was and on the digital music side, I always I was the one walking the hill on for Yahoo Music, saying, yeah, yeah. "Well, terrestrial radio pays zero percent, satellite radio pays seven percent, and online radio pays one hundred and twenty-five percent. There's something wrong." Um, but yeah, I. I, I but we, you know, even that was. Ba I think most of that was based on you know a lot of stuff with MTV and with uh, 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 you know normal radio was all based on promotion. Oh, we'll get lots of promotion the, out the of it. The P word. But, yeah, but it can be you know maybe it's time to re-examine that. You know. Yeah. So just to wrap up, you know, where does where does your business go from here? I mean, what, what's 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 next for you? Are you? Um, you know, are you looking to take on younger clients and do oh, the grind, yeah, or are you? A, I have this kid, a young uh, guy. I we someone turned me on to called Kyle Nicolaitis, and it's really exciting. And I love, you know, I love hearing new things. And you know, my other friends have got bands that I really like. You know, that uh, I mean, I'm really inv I love new music. I want music to succeed and I want new music to succeed more than ever and I would you know there's a band out of England called Eyes on Film that I really like they just played uh, Glastonbury they're really really cool you know I mean I get I still get turned on when I hear something cool you know and so is I, it about is it about the music for you I oh mean, it's I, never not been I would not you know I mean I haven't I never got into you know maybe to my own fault and detriment I never really managed anyone that I didn't like even you know like you know I don't work with Morrissey anymore. I don't work with Axel anymore. I just, you stand by it. Look at the body. Look at what they did. Yeah. They changed the world. Yeah. And somebody somewhere, this is what's so great. Somebody somewhere is playing one of their records. Rob Zombie, Axel, Morrissey, and Lionel. Someone somewhere is playing it as we speak. And it's getting them through, it's getting them through the day. Yeah. It's getting them through the night, you know, and it's like, Boy, that's what a, what a what a wonderful business to be in. You know, I recommend it. Yeah, music is the best. Yeah, music is the best. You know, and but buy it if you can. Ah, <laughs> so support it. Support, support it. it. Thanks, Andy. Thank you so much for for spending time with oh, us. It's my I pleasure. really appreciate thank it. Thank you for the thank you for the hooch. Cheers. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Um, we'll be back in a minute, and we will uh, we'll we'll throw some new music your way. So stay tuned. Thanks. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody who's watching live. Joining us in the studio now, we have Yahoo Music's managing editor, Lindsay Parker. Lindsay, hey. thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. How's your me. summer going? It's hot. It feels like summer. It feels like uh, Coachella weather lately. Any, any, any music getting you through it this summer? Funny you asked, Ian. Yes, the Wombats. <laughs> this Modern Glitch. Um, actually, it came out in April, but um, it's, it's definitely my summer driving album. Um, there are certain bands that my friends, they go, oh my god, that's a Lindsay band. Right. This is a Lindsay band. What does that mean? How would you define okay. a Lindsay band? First of all, I'm a raging Anglophile. It's like, if it's from England, I'll give it a chance. They're from Liverpool. Okay. Uh, second of all, I love hooky power pop. This was produced by Butch Walker, who I should come back and just talk about his album, because Butch Walker's a god to me. Jackknife Lee, who produced uh, the most recent Cars record, and The Drums, another band I love. And it's just like, the other thing I have a real soft spot for is humor and lyrics, like sardonic witty humor, like another one of my personal gods, uh, Jarvis Cocker, right. Morrissey, of course, Ray Davies, and Matthew Murphy from this uh, band, uh, The Wombats, definitely has all that. It's a lot of songs about sort of that kind of aimless, uh, train spotting style, like British pub life, and um, they can do a song about depression, and it's actually like a shouty, shouty, chanty, sing-along song. Um, right. It's just a feel-good record, even when they're singing about dark stuff. 
They have a good sense of humor. This album's a little less wacky than the last one they had. The last one, they're a wacky band. I interviewed them once and I was like, you guys need to have your own monkey style TV show where cameras just follow your madcap adventures. Our, zany, madcap. They're very like zany. A very Liverpudlian zaniness. Right. Like, and somehow our interview sort of devolved into them doing Culture Club karaoke. And I'm like, okay, I guess this is the interview. This is a little more mature, but it's still like totally fun. And you know, it's smart, but and it's silly, but it's like, it's clever it's, and it's very British. Okay, so Wombats, name of the record is? Uh, the full title is The Wombats Proudly Present This Modern Glitch. All their album titles say Proudly Present, and they should be proud, because this album's great. Well, so wait, let's, so let's talk about Butch Walker for a second. Oh, he's a god to me. It's, it actually really bothers me that he is not, I mean, he's making money, so I don't feel too sorry for him. He's produced Avril Lavigne and all these big people, but his own music, like, and people don't realize how many great songs he's put out. He did, like, he does glam rock, he does sort of, like, alt-country type stuff. He has a new record coming out. I got the advance uh, this week. Wow. Do you great. know when it comes out? I believe it comes out in August. All right, so there's another one for people to look out for. Yeah, I'll come back um, and talk about that um, one. Butch Walker. Any, anything else that you want to you you know, make sure people know about this summer? Wow. Oh. Not to put you on the spot. But. I really like the new Cold Cave record. I love Cut Copy. Those are Lindsay bands, like anything that, anything that basically sounds like it could have come out in 1983 from England, even if it came out now. Um, I'm liking the new Glass Vegas, again, you know, more right. Anglophilia over there. Uh, what else? Oh, the new Teddy Bears record. They're I haven't from, heard they're that. They're from Switzerland. It's, they have so many good all-stars on it. Eve's on it. CeeLo has a song on it that's all about, it's a love song to a cat. And I like cats too. <laughs> so that's a Lindsay song. And, and what are you still, are you still, how much are you blogging these days? I'm blogging a lot. A lot of it I do is about television, you know, when I'm not loving my indie rock, I'm loving my reality TV in between, you know, Idol ended and then we have So You Think You Can Dance and now X Factor's coming up. That keeps me busy, but, um, a lot of people like diss those shows, and I understand why they do. They're cheesy, but I think anything that gets people to be excited about music is a good thing. People who don't even normally care about music care about who wins American Idol. Sometimes, once in a while, in a show like Idol or Glee, they might discover a song. Like, they had the Black Kids song on Glee. Right. Um, you know, once in a while, like, these shows can expose music to people who normally don't care about these sort of things that don't read NME and don't, you know... Uh, read filter and don't know what top spin is and et cetera, you know? Sure. So, and, yeah, and so, I, I like so if that people stuff. want to get so if people are interested in, in getting your blog, where tell them where to get it. Uh, music.yahoo.com. I'm the managing editor of Yahoo Music. So I, I write about everything from music based reality TV to indie bands like the Wombats. I interview bands. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of a I'm just kind of a pop culture, pop music Obsessive. Uh, yeah, that's, well, that's actually why I wanted why I wanted to have you on because you know I, I don't I definitely uh, you know and, and and please if you'll come back that'd be great because um, I want to I want to make sure that we that we that we touch on all kinds of music. <laughs> to me, this part yeah. of the show is is not about any one particular segment or genre. It's just everyone has an album they love, and I think that I've got that, several. And exactly, and sharing those with people is is a good thing. I actually haven't heard this record, so I'm gonna I'm gonna you go grab to it. To? And that would be awesome. You can have. Is that is this legal? Uh, you can bring it back to me. Just All right, uh, perfect. You, you should hear it. I think you'll like it. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. Sure. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's fun. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of This Week in Music. Um, if you haven't yet, please follow us on Twitter. That's uh, TWI Music with a K, TWI M U S I K on Twitter. And you can also subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash show slash This Week in Music. And finally, Set it up to uh, download automatically for you in iTunes. If you, you know, like to listen in the car or listen while you're running, you can grab the audio version. Um, or if you'd like to you know, watch it on your Apple TV or whatever, you can get the HD video version. So stay tuned, or I'm sorry, thanks for tuning in. And tune in again next week is really what I meant to say uh, for This Week in Music. Appreciate it. Bye. I feel good, uh, even though I shouldn't. I'm chilling so hard, couldn't tell you where the hood is. Uh, I'm looking like a million bucks, sucker. I'm